So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to trace the top part of the face. The top part of the face, you could include the nose, but if you wanted to, you can just include the eyes. Okay, you need the outline of the shape of the head, and you also need to put that hair in there because we will be using that. In this one, I have drawn a little bit of her shoulder as well because we're going to use this. So if you can, if you can see it, add that in as well. Just leave the bottom section, the mouth and the jaw until the next step. You should have taken two pictures after looking at the PowerPoint. The first one was looking down and your head slightly turned away from the camera. And then the second one was more face on to the camera and you were pulling a different kind of face and showing a different expression. If you were struggling with getting those photos taken and getting them where you can trace them, you can use the ones that are on the PowerPoint. That's what I'm using today. So in the next step, you're going to trace the bottom half of the face and you're going to try and make it line up with the rest of the face. Can you see here, I might have to twist it slightly, but if it goes straight down, a lot like this, try and get it just to align down the middle. It doesn't matter if it doesn't fit quite right on the other sides, we can get it to join up by just adding the lines in. It will look strange, quite strange. <laughs> okay for the first part of it but it will change it's not going to look like a perfect portrait because that's not what we've been looking at i'll show you the next step as you can see i've already started to change the facial shapes i've started over with the hair i've made things a bit more angular what you're going to need to do is make sure you have got the picture of the weeping woman so you can see the different ways that Picasso has made the shapes more angular, which sections he has done. I have made each area that might usually have a little gap in it into a solid shape. So in the eyebrow, you can see that's a solid shape. Here, the cheek, I've made it more pointy. The nose, I've also squared it off and I'm going to be adding sections to that nose. And then with the t-shirt, I have also separated this into triangles, a lot like Picasso's work of the Weeping Woman. I'm just going to show you now how I'm going to do the mouth area and how I might section other parts off of the face. I'm pressing down quite hard just so you can clearly see what I'm doing, but I'm leaving the lines that would have originally been there just so you can see which shapes I've changed. Another tip is to follow. I've mentioned to you but before about form, so the way something's shaped, its curves, its edges how we can draw something to make it look like it's 3D. When you look at your face, you'll see that loads of parts of your face actually aren't flat at all, okay? 
different parts of your face stick out, some sink into your face a bit more. So when I've gone around, especially the eyes, I've used curved lines to suggest that there's usually a curve there, okay? So where the apples of your cheeks meet your eyes, maybe, I've used a curved line rather than just doing all of the portrait in completely straight lines. So now we can see clearly the different shapes that we've got in our portrait. We've made some angular, we've made some curved, and we still may have our lines that we had there before. What you're going to do now is you're going to outline your shapes. Okay, so if you look back at the Weeping Woman very quickly, you can see that all around those shapes, there is a thicker line to make you focus on that shape and to make that shape clearer. I've got a fine liner, but you can use anything really that is thick. So if you've got a felt tip, that's a good one. Um, by rows you could use, but you are going to find that the line is quite thin, so you might have to go over it a couple of times and it'll take a little bit longer. If you're really stuck for something, just use thicker, press down harder on your pencil and it'll really make it stand out for you. Just remember, if you do press down really hard with the pencil and with your pen, okay, if you go somewhere you don't want to go, you can't get rid of it. So do try and be as careful as you possibly can. I'm going to go over a couple for you now and then I'll show you what it comes out like at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to follow some of my shapes that I've got in here. It doesn't matter if you don't stick to the line 100% because you can rub out the pencil afterwards. That's if you're working with a pen. Okay, I'm gonna copy the kind of hair Picasso's put in his. He's got long marks going all the way down the hair, making it look like it's flowing. Okay, remember you can twist the page to make certain areas easier for you to draw. I have to do this when it comes to the eye area because my it's easier for my hands to do it this way. Now, if you do want to block out areas, that's fine. What I mean by block out is fill that line in, okay? Or you can do it by going back and adding a thicker line. It's nice when you use different thicknesses because it doesn't make it look all the same. Like this section here, I'm going to block out her lash line. But can you see how it looks smoother when you use a thicker line? It's less wobbly. those lashes in. Some of you might find that you took a picture with your eyes open and that's what you're using. So you've probably got a circle shape that you're going to draw around the edge of. Just be careful, I've just made a little mistake. Because you're using felt tip, it stays wet for a little bit longer. So what will happen is if you put your hand over it like I just did, you'll end up smudging it. So just be careful. Turn the page if you need to. I'm gonna add a different shape here actually. So we're on the last step, you made it, well done. Okay, the very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some color to our portrait. And what it'll do is it'll really separate those shapes because at the moment it might look a bit just crazy with shapes. We can't quite pick up which area of the face is what, but using a colour will help section those areas off. You can use anything that you've got at home. Okay, I couldn't find my colour and pencils. I don't know where I've put them, but I am going to use certain things like uh, highlighters that I've got in my pencil case. I've also got a few fine liners that I use for taking notes, but they're different colours, so that will help me out. And then I've got the odd colour fine liner. 
Okay, so anything you can get your hands on that's coloured. You're using felt tips now. I will have to make sure to just ever so slightly go by the line because if I keep going over the top of that black, it's going to make the colours merge into each other because this is wet too. That's why if you're using colour pencils, it's a little bit easier to colour the sections because you can be a little bit faster. It doesn't matter if you do go over the lines because it's not going to make it blurry. I'm just going to section off each part of the face. I'm actually going to go in and do a little bit of blue. So it's completely up to you. You will find that it's hard to make them one solid colour. Can you see how, especially with highlighters, how you get bits of lighter area? Oh, I've just scooped up some of the black. It doesn't matter, we can move it around. Just try and be as neat as possible. This bit's really fun because you don't have to stick to your traditional face colours, okay? If you look at the portrait again, I know I've asked you to look at it about five times now, but it just reminds you that you can be brave with your colour, okay? You don't have to do skin tones. I feel like the top section of the face is quite sad. So I'm using a blue shade. And it also doesn't matter if the colour is patchy. As long as you've covered that whole page, can you see the different marks I've made with the pen? Eventually that would go, but if you keep just going over the top anyway, in certain areas, it blends together a bit more. He uses paint in his work, so his areas aren't completely solid colour. They do have a tiny bit of other colours in there, different sections. Oh, I'm going to do red hair. So I'm actually going to match my eyebrows to my hair. You don't have to, it is completely up to you. You could do the hair in different colours if you wanted to. Rainbow. But it will, can you see how you started looking more into the different areas? It doesn't look as flat anymore because we're breaking it up into sections. So this part is really fun, really. You just do it what colour you want to do it. Okay, doesn't matter if you go out the line slightly. You could even do a background if you wanted to. See how my highlight just picked up a bit of black then it doesn't matter too much can you say it doesn't matter too much oh and i've done it again okay so finish off your portrait and i can't wait to see them remember you need to upload them to your assignment area on your google classroom you're all on different google classrooms if you still need a little bit of help with that, remember to email us. I look forward to seeing them.